came in and said, I want you, Coach Shea, to think about what are the most important traits of a quarterback. So when it comes time to the draft, we can kind of use some of those traits to see if there's a quarterback that fits what we're looking for. So I want to share these with you. These are the same quarterback traits that I had the opportunity to share with some very, very elite quarterbacks. Each year I have the good fortune to train different quarterbacks. It all started with Brady Quinn, a quarterback from Notre Dame. And then it went to Matthew Stafford and Josh Freeman, Sam Bradford, Lane Gabbard, and Robert Griffin. So all of these quarterbacks have gone through the same little exercise that I'm going to share with you today. And for the coaches, you might appreciate this because not only are these some of my thoughts, but I actually would listen to those quarterbacks I just named off. And every once in a while, they would say one that I had to add to my list. I started with five. I think there's eight on the, on the board tonight. So some of these are additions as they came from some of the quarterbacks that I've had a chance to train. Okay, so let's take a look. What's important? Traits of a quarterback. You've got to be able to look at yourself. Uh, it may be difficult to read English, is that correct? Competitor. Competitor. You've got to be able to compete in everything you do as a quarterback. There was a story about Joe Montana. He was a great quarterback before you were ever born. Right? Before you were ever born. Do you know the name Joe Montana? Yes. yes. He would sit in the locker room, as they, they claim, and he would sit there and throw a little uh, wadded up tape and throw it into a barrel and then bring a player, a teammate over and challenge him. And every day they'd flip that thing. I mean, that's what drove Joe Montana. He would compete in anything that you put in front of him. And that's what you love about certain quarterbacks. You love them to be a competitor. Okay? Number one. Number two, he needs to be able to, to lead, leadership. The best way I can describe leadership is when a quarterback comes running off the field late in the game and the defensive guys go running onto the field and say, we're going to get this ball back for our, our offense because we believe in our quarterback that if he gets one more chance, he'll score points to win the game. That's leadership. How you come off the field after an interception. Have you all thrown interceptions as quarterbacks? Yes. You come off the field, do you put your head down and do you walk over to the end of the bench and sit there and curl up? No. You come off the field with your head up, you look right in your coach's eyes and you say, Coach, next series, call that same pass. Or call a pass and I'll guarantee you I'll complete it. That's the kind of confidence you have to bring to your football team, the leadership, okay? You cannot read about leadership in leadership books. Quarterback leadership is totally different, totally different than any other type of leadership there is. And you've got to find out what some of those ways to lead are. That, that's just a couple of examples, okay? Number three. You've got to be a winner. Okay, you've got to be a winner. That was Robert Griffin's idea. He added that to my list. He thought that you had to establish yourself to be a winner. So that's why they keep score. And what you do in the red zone oftentimes determines whether you win the game or not. If you're in the red zone four times a game, You've got a chance now to score four times. That's how you win football games. Okay? They say the most important series of a football game for the quarterback and their, his offense is the first possession of the game because you establish an attitude with your defensive opponent. You send them a message on that very first possession of the game. And then the last two possessions of the fourth quarter. 
the last two possessions of the fourth quarter, and those are the most pos important possessions that an offense has during the course of a, of a typical game. You might have the lead with four points. You've got to make sure you get a first down to win the game so you don't put your defense back on the field. You may have to have a two-minute drill. Do you know what a two-minute drill is? Good, two-minute drill. You have to drive 80 yards to win the game. Last possession of the game, okay? Winner. Number four, you have to make plays. You have to make plays with your feet, okay? With your feet. Everything starts from the waist down. Everything good that happens to a quarterback starts from the waist down. And you use your mind to make decisions with And your eyes to confirm those decisions, okay? Play me. Third down and five. Third down and five. Your coach calls a pass. Nobody's open. You're gonna take a sack or you're gonna try to make a play with your feet. That's a playmaker, okay? Brightness. How bright are you? Uh, you the answer. You the answer to that. Hey, stand up, stand up. Football IQ, quarterback IQ. Right now, you're at the head of the class. Just in a simple little drill that we did, you demonstrated that you are right when it comes to knowing something about football. Knowing something that your, your teammates did not know until tonight. Okay? So. Three, extend plays. Today, I watched most of you play today. And many of your coaches were involved. Okay? I saw the ball on the ground. You fumbled the quarterback center exchange. The snap between center and quarterback. You fumbled it. Right? Between you and your center. I saw a large number of interceptions. Interceptions. Balls that were overthrown. You've got to correct that. You've got to make those mistakes go away. Okay? Um, what is the most important play in football? What is the most important play in football? And it happened today about 550 times in your games. It happened today about 550 times if you take all the plays that you guys ran today. What's the most important play in football? First look. Ball. Since you were all under center today, it's what you do under center. And take the snap and secure it. That's the most important play between center and quarterback. Without that, the ball drops on the ground and all chaos is created. Okay. What's the most important point in football? What is the most important point in football? Huh? Come on, quarterbacks. What is the most, most important point in football? Yeah. Le point le plus important dans un match. What? Punting the ball? Protecting the ball. That's good. Uh, I like that. That's not the answer. Anybody else? The most important point. Chose plus important. La chose la plus importante. It's the extra point. It's the extra point. The one where you hold and he kicks. <laughs> Accuracy. Tonight, in a simple little drill like we're going to go through, we're going to look at your accuracy tonight. How accurate you are. Uh, ball. I am on the run as a receiver. And the ball is thrown right here, one foot in front of my number, my jersey number. One foot. A slant route. A slant pass. I catch the ball at full stride, and now I'm able to do what? Make yards after the catch. You throw the ball right here, and I've got to slow down to make that catch. 
And now I'll slow down and I may drop it half the time, right? I may drop the ball half the time. So anytime you lack an accuracy, you hurt your offense. Throw the ball in the vision line of the receiver. Run down, run a hitch, run a curve. Throw the ball right at my jaw. Put it right in the vision line of your receiver. Okay? Now he will catch that ball 99% of the time. You throw that pass down here, and I'll drop the ball 50% of the time. You extend me up here, and I may drop the ball 50% of the time. And I'm not going to be able to catch the ball, lock it, get my inside shoulder, and make two more yards, unless you're accurate with the throw. So I don't care how strong an arm you have. I could care less, but I want to see accuracy tonight. And we have receivers, and they're going to be stationary receivers. They're not going to be moving. So let's see how accurate you can be. That is what Robert Griffin's all about. You know, all that great footwork of his and all that great athleticism, he is an accurate passer. Or at least he used to be. Until he got injured. But he can throw the ball at Sam Bradford. He plays for who? The St. Louis Rams. Sam Bradford. He throws the ball in his pro passing day. He had 63 attempts. <coughs> 63. And there were about 250 NFL evaluators there. Coaches, owners, general managers. Out of 63 passes, he completed 62. And 61 of those 63 were exactly where the ball needed to be placed. So out of 63 passes, he missed on two in terms of accuracy. Okay? That's how important that is. And your, uh, one of your coaches last night said that normally you pass the ball in a game about 20 times, maybe less, right? 15 times a game you pass the ball? 20? Well, 18 of those 20 have got to be accurate passes to allow your team to move the sticks. How'd you play today? So, so, how'd you play? How'd you play? So, so? How'd you play? Okay. You get injured. Okay. okay, how'd you play? So, so, how'd you play? Injured? How'd you play? What number were you? Number on your jersey? Two. 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 What number were you? Nine. What? Nine. Nine. Black jersey? Yes. I watched you. Eleven. Eleven. How'd you play today? Okay. How'd you play? One. I played. Red jersey? Yes. Good job. Thank you. Okay. That's what you want to remember as quarterbacks, okay? The traits. Now, let's... This is Baylor University. And on this day, there were about 250, again, about 250, but there was probably 200 media people also. And Robert was very popular coming out of college. This is just a simple drop the ball in the bucket. This is what we call a pat and go. A pat and go. The receiver goes on the pat of the ball, and he runs a nice, easy fade route. The ball should come right over the helmet. Robert wasn't quite as accurate as he should have been in these throws. He got a little bit better as, as the drill went along. Like you can see here, where he's placing the ball. That was a good throw. That ball over the outside shoulder. Okay? So this is the way you could warm up with your receivers. You get your receivers to warm up and so forth. 
Now this is Robert just going through some warm-ups. Watch his feet. Okay. He gets up on the ball of the foot too much. He's got to keep that right foot more of a platform. But he's extremely accurate. The ball always hits the neckline. He's just moving around here. And these are all the warm-up throws that you can create with your receivers, and all they have to do are stationary targets. That's a three-step drop, three-step. Now that's when he's throwing like a hot pass against Blitz. So what we tried to do, coaches, is we tried to put Robert through. He hasn't started his actual passing yet. These are just warm-ups. There's a good drill. Kind of pick your feet up, throw it with good balance. Tonight, we're going to throw some on the move. I want to teach you a little bit about throwing on the run. There's where you have to move in the pocket. I watched a lot of you move in the pocket today, trying to find a receiver. Very athletic. Now here's what we call a quick arm. We're trying to develop his arm and see how fast the arm can, can release the football. Not his feet, but his arm. See how fast that ball comes out. That's what young quarterbacks have to understand is probably one of the most important things about playing quarterback is how quickly the arm works. Never want to leave. 